In this video, I'd like to explain what a vertical asymptote is. Turns out how to find a vertical asymptote is usually quite easy, but understanding why they occur is another story. So in this problem, I'm starting with a rational function, polynomial divided by a polynomial. Turns out that whatever x values make the denominator zero in a rational function creates an asymptote on the graph. So you can see here that the denominator would be zero if I were to plug in x equals four. If I was to plug in four, you'd have four minus four is zero in the denominator, and in mathematics it uh, is undefined. There's no meaningful way to define dividing by zero, and therefore if you were to plug in x equals four, you'd see in the graph there is no corresponding y value. But what happens near four is kind of special. As you plug in numbers close to four, the graph seems to go vertical. In fact, a vertical asymptote basically is just that. It uh, is a way of describing the fact that the graph uh, looks like a vertical line uh, near x equals 4. So finding the vertical asymptote is actually pretty easy. You set the denominator equal to 0 and you solve. So this equation has x minus 4 in the denominator. You set it equal to 0, you add 4 to both sides, and you get x equals 4, which is deceptive because it looks like an x value, but it actually is the equation for vertical lines. I usually make my students write that the answer is the line x equals 4 as opposed to uh, a single value. So, And notice I dot this to let people know that these aren't xy pairs on the graph. It's just a reference line to describe the behavior of the graph. So why does this occur? That's what the video is supposed to be about. What happens near 4? Why does it go vertical uh, at all? So that's actually easy to describe if you're good at arithmetic. So I'm going to plug numbers in as if I was to uh, suppose that the question was just to draw the graph yourself and you would do that by making an XY chart and plug in numbers. So I'm going to start by plugging in say the number 5. Uh, if I was to plug in 5 the Y value would be 1 over 5 minus 4 which is 1 over 1 which is simply just 1. So notice that the graph does pass through the point 5 comma 1 which is somewhere around here. There's the point 5 comma 1. Uh, let me plug in numbers closer to 4 though because that's where the interesting behavior is. If I was to move um, to the right of 4, if I was to move left closer and closer to 4, this is what happens. Suppose I move really close, say 4.1. If you were to plug in 4.1, I know you can do this on the calculator, but uh, I think the understanding is uh, best done if you do the arithmetic yourself. So if I was to plug in a number close to 4, because you're subtracting 4, what you're going to get is a really small answer. In fact, 4.1 take away 4 is 0.1. And when you have a fraction with a really small denominator, like 0.1, well, how many times does 0.1 go into 1? Well, many times because it's small. So we have a fixed numerator. We have a denominator that's really small. Small numbers go into the number 1 very many times. In fact, uh, one-tenth, by definition, goes into one ten times. So already, if you were to plug in 4.1, and it's hard to estimate where that's even at over here, you have a y value of 10, and that's why I can't even see the point here, because my scale here only goes as high as 4. So even putting it here is not correct, because this is 4 and I'm trying to find 10. So it basically skyrockets uh, really quickly. But just to show you one more iteration, if you got even closer to 4, uh, say 4.01, what's going to happen is the closer you get to 4, the smaller the denominator is going to get because you're subtracting 4 down there. So what you'd have is, again, fixed numerator of 1. What you're going to get is 4.01 minus 4 is 0.01. Because I'm closer to 4, subtracting 4 is going to leave a very small number there. And now we have 1 one hundredth. How many times does 1 one hundredth go into 1? Well, 100 by definition. So if I was to move over to 4.01, which I can't even really show that. I mean, where's 4.1, for example? But 4.0 and even closer to 4, we're up at 100. And this, look at this y value of 4 here. So 100 is so high, I can't even show it in the, in the video. So the idea is if you plug in successive uh, values of x closer and closer to 4 and, and do that, uh, as you do that, the y values are going to be positive, and they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's why this graph uh, appears to be vertical. Technically, there's always some slope to it, uh, but in mathematics, a vertical line, the slope is undefined. Uh, if you're an engineer, they say it's infinity. Um, 
Let's go from the other side though, because notice the behavior is a little bit different to the left of four. If I was to take x values to the left of four and plug in x values closer and closer to four, what happens is they get large, so to speak, but in the negative direction. In fact, the graph goes down to uh, what some people call negative infinity. Um, now, negative infinity is not a real number, so I hesitate to do this, but if you, if I beg your forgiveness, let me uh, call this negative infinity and this uh, positive infinity. Sometimes I do that to help students remember, but uh, infinity is not a real number. You shouldn't be treating it as such, and that's just the mathematician in me talking. Uh, so at any rate, let's do that. Let's plug in numbers four, close to four, uh, but to the left. So on the real number line, to the left of four would be things like 3.9 or something. Uh, for starters, I might just plug in a 3 just to show you. Uh, if you were to plug in 3, uh, that's similar to than plugging in 5, in fact, because if you plug in 3, what you get is negative 1 uh, in the denominator. And what you'd have is the same, we're going to get the same results as before if I do this right, except they're going to be negative, right? 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1 instead of positive 1. So if you compare these results, uh, you'll see a pattern here. So if you plug in 3, you get negative 1, which is right here. Now, I want to move to the right. Uh, so a number closer to 4, if you're at 3, would be, say, 3.9. I'm going to cut to the chase here and plug in 3.9. And if I did that, you'd have 3.9 minus 4. And it's the same story over again when you plug a number in close to 4 because you're subtracting 4. A number close to 4, subtract 4, is going to be a really small number, except the difference is it's going to be negative. So 3.9 take away 4 is negative 0.1, and compare that to 1 over 0.1, right? We're comparing these two uh, results. And what you'd get is that 0.1 goes into 1 10 times again, but a positive value by negative is a negative. So we're getting the same behavior, just in the negative direction. Uh, so we have negative 10 here. Let me erase that before this gets too cluttered. Um, so what we have is if you plugged in 3.9, you'd be at negative 10. Again, my y scale only goes down as low as, say, negative 6 here. So already at 3.9, we're down here at negative 10 here, and the graph just goes way down there. Uh, if you wanted, you could do one more quick iteration and see the closer you get to 4, the larger the y value. So your the, you know, the closer to 4, you get the smaller the denominator, but the smaller the denominator of a fraction, the bigger the, the fraction's value will become. So I have a small denominator in a fraction. The value of the fraction itself, with a fixed numerator anyway, is going to be very large. In fact, this is 1 over negative 0.01. Uh, so this will be 0.01 goes into 1 100 times, and a positive divided by a negative is a, a negative. So again, we're getting the same result as before, except uh, negative. So that's why they occur. Actually, finding a vertical asymptote um, can be just as easy as what I, what I showed you, setting the dynamic equal to zero and solving. Now, having said all this, you should know that there is one exception to this rule. You can't always just set the denominator of a rational function equal to zero and expect to see an asymptote. The rule is that this only works provided that this rational function has been simplified, meaning there's no common factors to numerator and denominator. And the only way to really explain that well is to show you an example. Uh, these videos tend to get too long, so I put it at the, uh, at the end. But here's an example of a rational function that if you were to simply write the denominator down, set it equal to zero and solve, what you would get is not a vertical asymptote. So if I was to subtract 3 on both sides, I'd get this, expecting this to be the line, x equals negative 3. The problem is it does not work. Uh, you will not get a vertical asymptote at negative 3, and let me attempt to explain why. Uh, so if you take our equation here, and you were to factor the numerator, I'm not going to show this isn't a factoring video, but this numerator here can be written as the quantity x plus 3 multiplied by the quantity x minus 3. And even if you don't know how to factor, you could probably know how to FOIL, and you can FOIL this and uh, verify that this is an equivalent uh, expression to this one. Uh, so my denominator is still x plus 3. And in mathematics, if uh, you have factors, factors by definitions are expressions that are being multiplied. And this expression here and this expression here happens to be multiplied. So that makes these factors, not terms. By the way, if this was a plus or a minus symbol, addition and subtraction, we'd call those terms. 
In fact, inside this first factor is two terms. X is a term, three is a term. So things separated by addition or subtraction are called terms. You never cancel terms, but you can cancel factors. So the idea is this factor, x plus 3, uh, and this factor, x plus 3, technically, you know, we shouldn't be saying cancel. They actually just simplify. Anything divided by itself is the number 1. So, for example, you know, 7 divided by 7, 1. Uh, 8 divided by 8, 1. So the idea is if you were to plug an x value in here, this would be the same as that, and when you divide two numbers that are equal, you get the number 1. So this is actually equal to 1 times x minus 3, and that is almost true. In fact, this is equal to that for infinitely many x values except for 1. There's one exception to this. So when I was a student, I hate to admit this, uh, I ignored this little statement off to the side because I didn't really understand what it meant. <laughs> but it turns out that there's one exception. If you were to make a table of values for this equation, say, and make a table of values for this equation, you'd see that they agree for every x value in the world, all real numbers except for one. So, for example, if I was to plug four into this, you would get out, if you were to plug in x equals 4 into the left-hand side, or this here, remember these two things are equal, all I did was factor, if you plugged x equals 4 into here or into here, you would get y equals 1. Uh, but if you did that over here, uh, if you plugged in x equals 4, same thing, if you plugged in 4, 4 minus 3 is 1, you get y equals 1. So you could do this forever. There's infinitely many x values that this is equal to that, and that's why we say they're equal. So what's the one exception? The exception is, uh, at x equals negative 3, because watch what happens at x equals negative 3. If I plug x equals negative 3 into the original equation, or its equivalent statement right here, what you'd get is, um, remember I'm not, not simplifying yet, this whole thing without, without canceling or simplifying, if you plugged in x equals negative 3, you'd get 0 right here, and 0 times anything is 0, uh, so you'd get 0, and if you want, you know, if you plug negative 3 into here, you'd get negative 6. You'd get 0 times negative 6 over 0. Uh, so you cannot define, divide by 0 in math. In fact, you get 0 over 0. That's simply undefined in math, so your y value is equal to undefined, if you let me. It's just simply undefined. So the idea is when you said these two things are equal, that's only true if you get uh, results the same, right, outputs the same on, on both sides, for the same input. So if I was to plug x equals negative 3 in here, if these two things are really equal, then I should get the y value being undefined, but I don't. If I plug in x equals negative 3, uh, then you'd get negative 3, your y value would be negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6, and a no day of the week is negative 6 undefined. So here's an example of an x value that this expression yields a different uh, answer than this expression. So these two things aren't equal for that x value. So what you'd see, um, you know, reading in textbooks or something, I always saw this semicolon, this disclaimer, x cannot be uh, negative 3. Um, or you'd see it in words, for all x except th negative 3. So when you do this business of canceling and say the answer is x minus 3, uh, this seems like a picky point. This isn't the letter J, by the way. It's a semicolon. This might be a picky point, but it really isn't. By not saying this, you have said that this expression equals this expression for all x values, and it's simply wrong. This expression is equal to this one for all x values except for negative 3. So what are the implications? I started by saying there's not going to be a vertical asymptote. So I took the time to type this into my graphing calculator, and I'm just going to zoom 6 to put this on a standard window. Do you see a vertical asymptote at negative 3? That's what the procedure predicted right here, that it would be at x equals negative 3. And you don't. At x equals negative 3, we are right there. And I do not see the graph going vertical there, uh, as it shouldn't. It, it doesn't create a vertical asymptote. So this setting the denominator to 0 and solving only works provided there's no common factors to numerator and denominator, meaning the rational function's in simplified form. If it's in simplest form, then go ahead and do that procedure. By the way, let me press trace, type in negative 3, just to show you that even though it seems like this, uh, that there's a y value there, in fact, it looks like when you plug in negative 3, you get negative 6, as we saw down here uh, when I did the arithmetic. It looks like you'd get negative 6, but the calculators know 
Uh, I was going to say it's no dummy, but it really doesn't know what it's doing, so it is a dummy. But if I press enter, it does what it should. When you type negative 3 into this equation, look what I typed in. I typed in the left-hand side here. At negative 3, it's supposed to be undefined, and it is. So even though visually it looks like the y would be negative 6, look what the calculator is telling you. It says when x is negative 3, y is nothing. <laughs> so I, I like that feature of the calculator that it's, uh, that it's accurate in that manner. So hopefully this has helped you understand a little more about vertical asymptotes of rational functions.